Hi all, it's Jake here, just cruising about in the uh, the Golf R. Sorry it's been a while, but uh, I've just been very busy with work and what have you. Uh, so obviously the first question answered is, uh, Jay, where are you? Have you sold your Golf? No, I haven't. I've still got it. <laughs> just uh, being very busy. Uh, so this video is about why I think this car is the best all-rounder in the world for the money. Um, now, if you remember, uh, the last test drive video I did was the, the BMW Estate, M, M Sport Estate. And uh, <clears throat> I showed how it was a diesel, it was three litre, six cylinder, and it was an absolute ball to drive with amazing MPG. So you'd have thought that I'd be saying that that was the best car to go for, where, you know, being an all-rounder is concerned, you've got uh, great practicality, you've got great uh, fuel economy, fantastic performance and grip. But what we have to remind ourselves is that car is £44,000. Whereas one of these cars now, uh, I've been speaking to a few people that have picked up nearly new models. You can pay 27 grand for a very well spec Golf R these days. So, you know, that that's it. That It takes the biscuit. The Golf R is the, the car. It's the all-rounder you can buy. Uh, if you saw my uh, Five Things I Love video, you said, you. I think the first thing I mentioned was the Jacqueline Hyde, where you put this car in race mode. It's a demon. It's a driver's car offering great driver's dynamics, putting a smile on your face with lots of grip and lots of power, uh, put it in eco mode and uh, it becomes just a regular golf. Uh, you could put around town achieving great miles per the gallon. Now, at the minute, as you can see, I'm achieving 34.4. Uh, that's entirely in eco mode. Uh, I got chatting to a few guys uh, recently, golf R owners, a couple of uh, 7.5, Mark 7.5 owners, and they claim that they are achieving between 44 and 47 miles per the gallon. 47 miles per the gallon. Uh, the best I've ever achieved in this car on a 200 mile journey, which was motorway, uh, I'll tell you what it was, it was A1M, heading north and south, obviously, uh, to getting off at Weatherby and heading to Skipton via Harrogate. Uh, that involved obviously motorway driving but it also involved a bit of B-road sprinting. Well, not B-road, but uh, the A59 between Harrogate and uh, Skipton. It, you put race mode on, you get some great dr driving uh, there. And I achieved, the best I've ever achieved in this, my typical MPG is about 36, but the best I've achieved is 38.6 miles to the gallon. So let me know in your comments if uh, you've been able to achieve anywhere near 40, 40 miles to the gallon. I uh, spoke to a guy that owns an auto golf R in, on, in manual form, and he was achieving 29 miles to the gallon. So, uh, yeah. But if you've been watching the channel, you'll know that I bought this car as a toy, a weekend toy. Uh, that's changed, basically, because it's just been on charge all the time. I'm doing a lot of motorway mileage in my Land Cruiser, and I've had an insurance uh, renewal, and it came back as this car being worth £23,000. So, you know, even though I'm not doing any mileage in it, even though it's basically showroom condition, it's still losing boatloads of money. So now I use it more as a daily. Uh, if you've been watching my channel, I was trying to avoid driving it in the rain, uh, kept it under its cover, so on and so forth. I was basically treating it like a supercar, keeping it garaged or keeping it under a cover, do not take it out, not take it out in the rain. Uh, during the winter months, it was off the road, pretty much. Uh, so because it's lost so much money, I basically decided to start using it as uh, a daily driver. So I use it to work now, I go up and down the A1M in it. And um, what I found with this car is, no matter what, what the conditions, it seems to be a perfect, perfectly balanced car. For example, I was heading up to Yorkshire a couple of weeks ago and it, it was absolutely pouring it down with rain. And I mean torrential, beyond belief, flash flooding and everything. We're on the A1M. I've got, uh, I'm in eco mode in ACC is on and uh, I cannot see in front of me because of spray back from lorries, from cars, but I felt so, so confident and I felt so comfortable that you wouldn't have believed in the driving conditions and you know, previously before my Land Cruiser, the only other small car I've driven in those conditions was my Type R and uh, because it's not so well refined and, be, and because it's a raw experience if you like, it in those sort of conditions, you, your heart is in your mouth. You, you're scared to death. Your windscreen wipers are going up and down as fast as fuck like that. Uh, you can't see anything. You try and overtake. You, you, you're, you're hoping and praying that there isn't uh, anything on the road, like a, 
a piece of wood on the road or a slight bend because you literally can't see in those conditions and uh, this car it just felt like you could stick to 70 miles an hour obviously you couldn't because it was just so wet and there was flash flooding everywhere but I get it now I get why you know when you see BMW drivers or Audi drivers in those conditions or even van drivers in decent vans they they're still doing 70 80 90 miles per hour in those conditions in each other's boots and it's got to be because these modern cars are so they feel so well built in those conditions plus the four-wheel drive as well gives you it feels like you can drive in any condition and not worry about grip but obviously in flash flooding you're going to crash if you do 70 mile an hour or even 60 mile an hour so you do drive according to conditions but i've never experienced that before other than in a truck where I felt so confident in those conditions, surrounded by lorries and cars giving off a lot of spray. So that was interesting. Uh, and, you know, I'm finding I'm driving in eco mode a lot now. Uh, I'm really enjoying it as well. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, Jay, what the hell are you doing? It's a Golf R, you know, drive it like you stole it. But, you know, it's it's just eco mode's great. Uh, it's good to see the MPG going up. Um, and when I am out on B roads, it is great just to flip it into sport mode and, uh, you know start using the paddles and that's another thing i was in snake pass a few weeks ago and uh i decided to use sports auto rather than putting it into manual and uh, you know giving it the gears and it was brilliant um coming into a tight left hander i was about to downshift it did it for me and it held the revs at 3000 rpm through this whole corner and it was perfect as soon as i floored it there was plenty of grip and i was on my friend within seconds in front of me very impressed so sports auto because of that experience now whenever i be road uh, play i use i use sports auto now i don't bother changing the paddles um so you know and giving you another example of uh, why this car's a brilliant daily driver uh with dsg uh coming back south from weatherby twice in a row this has happened but uh, this particular example involves an aston martin and a bmw m2 uh, you get the interactive signs and every now and then they say pedestrian on road or animal on road so you keep going down you know you're doing your steady 70 and uh, next thing you know there's hazard lights flashing in front of you and you come to a complete stop uh, to my left there was an m2 absolutely gorgeous looked clean looked like a dealer de delivering it and behind me was a rather nice dbs aston martin dbs and it was interesting because i have my coffee here and I, was, I had one hand on my coffee and I'm sipping my coffee. And as I'm watching these cars, it suddenly dawned on me what they're doing. They're like, every time we're starting and start, stopping and starting, they're uh, going back into neutral, putting the handbrake on. Then when we're moving again, they're going, they're putting the clutch down, going into gear, putting the, the handbrake down. And then we're moving forward. Then we stop suddenly again. And then suddenly the, the traffic moves and we all start going 50 mile an hour again. Then we stop again. And all I could see was these guys, left hands going up and down, up and down. And I could see them working the gearbox. and. You know, it. I felt smug. I felt so. I literally felt like I was in the best car in the world because minutes earlier, I'd been on the A59 with a Porsche, chasing a Porsche in, in sports auto mode, and uh, it was brilliant. You know, I, I just realised it. It it doesn't. It didn't illustrate. It couldn't have uh, illustrated any uh, clearer of why this car is what it is. The the world, in my opinion, the world's best all rounder. Uh, I mean, you might argue that the S3 is better, you might, you know, because of the interior and all that jazz, but I've spoken to a couple of S3 owners and they admit that the Golf R offers a better driving experience, you know, it's better driving dy dynamics. All you're getting with the S3 is a far better interior. But let's think about that. You, when you say a far better interior, is the Golf R in interior really that bad? I mean, uh, I used the park and ride the other day and uh, I had to go on a bus, you know, first time I've been on a bus in ages, I, I, I'm sounding like a, a, a rich boy now, but, you know, first time in a long time I was on the bus and the interior was absolutely hideous, it was a brand new bus, an eco bus, completely battery powered, and uh, I absolutely bloody well hated it, so, you know, you get back in the Golf R and, you, and you, people that say, oh, the Golf R interior isn't very good, well, I, you know, I don't know what you're driving, but there are worse interiors. And I, I know I'm using a bus an example, but a taxi. You go and sit in a taxi, and how nice is the interior in a, a typical taxi like that one that just went past? So, yeah, to me, and I'm sure a lot of you agree, and, uh, you know, those of you that are in the market to buy this car, or a car, and when you test drive this car, for the money as well, 27-odd grand, I mean, I'm not talking about the 7.5, I'm talking about the Mark 7. 
you just can't go wrong. Uh, it, it, you know, it's a no-brainer. It just, it just, everything is perfectly balanced, and um, you know, it's just really, really has impressed me. That's not to say this car's perfect, not by any means. Um, I've got three problems with this car at the minute. Uh, the first one being, men, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, I went on the A1M in the rain, and because people were driving normal, you know, even though uh, I was stuck behind lorries and I was sticking to a 60, because, well, I did hit 70 at parts, because I did feel confident, but I knew I shouldn't, so I went back to 60 again. But then, when I pulled over, you'd get a van or a TT overtake me really aggressively, you know, probably flooring it. And what that did was, it obviously kicked up road uh, debris onto the car. Anyway, I gave the car a clean a couple of weeks ago, and uh, there's chip marks all on this side now. It's really bad, and it's pathetic because my, my type R, which is 11 years old, has also done quite a lot of motorway mileage. Hasn't got nearly as many chips. And look at the mileage, I've done 4,300 miles. So that's pathetic. So, you know, everybody's blaming the EU. They're saying the EU is making manufacturers use uh, less toxic paints, I think it is. So yeah, that's annoyed me. Uh, another thing that's annoying me is uh, because I'm using sports auto a lot in race mode, the other day I did use manual, use the paddles. You know, I just plicked it in manual and it lagged very, very badly. Uh, I tried to downshift from fourth to second and uh, this indicator here, it was saying three, but this, the revs were screaming as if it was in second and then finally it went down to number two. So uh, clearly there's uh, something going on there. I have complained about that to my dealer before and they claim it was because uh, I was using eco mode. But uh, could you let me know in the comments if you've noticed any laggy uh, gear changes in your Golf R? That, that would be interesting. But I'm going to get it on video and hopefully show the dealer and hopefully it won't fob me off. But that, that's the other thing with these. When you try and get any war warranty work do, you've got to be very firm with them because otherwise they just keep fobbing you off. They keep saying, oh, we found no problem. And you like think to yourself, well, did you even look? Did you even look, mate? So, uh, yeah, that's the second thing. The third thing is, and I'll, I might include pictures of it, are my, my exhaust tips have pitted quite badly. Uh, it, I spotted it at 3,000 miles just after the uh, dealer did the, the, the um, what's it called, the first service. And uh, if you bear in mind, right, and as you, if you've been following this channel, as you well know, I have been cleaning those tips, you know, polishing them and uh, using auto sole with a microfiber cloth. Uh, and uh, over the winter, this car did not touch rain at all. It didn't touch rain once. So uh, before, after I'd um, after I did the uh, the service, uh, I did the tips, saw the pitting, and I was disgusted because uh, I've done my tire part tips as well. Eleven years old, same same stock that came with the car, and th they're they're like showroom. They're like brand new. So you know the manufacturing processes they're using now for um, stainless steel exhaust system, I mean, sorry, these chrome tips, this exhaust system is pathetic, VW. I don't mind telling you, it really is a disappointment that they build a car of this caliber and then they give cheap components. I know a lot of people, they upgrade the system with stainless steel, but why should you have to do that on a brand new car, VW? Where are you coming from? Uh, I don't think it's just VW now. I think all manufacturers are doing it. I'm not quite sure. If you own any other cars, such as a Honda or Subaru or you know, can you let us know? Do you, do you get pitting with your, your chrome tips nowadays? My Type R, 11 years old, still good as new. So yeah, apart from them three, uh, this car's brilliant. But getting back to the uh, 47 miles to the gallon claim, well, as you can see, we're getting 30, 33 miles to the gallon. We're in eco mode. Uh, we've not done any B road uh, fun yet. Uh, so was were they lying? Was it pub talk? Really would love to get your opinion on that. And uh, that basically wraps this video up. Uh, I'm sorry it's been a while. Hopefully coming up, I'll do some more tips and tricks on this car. And uh, I know I said I'd do some test drive videos, but the weather has been very, very bad. Literally, I think it's the wettest summer on record we've had in here in the UK. That, coupled with the fact I've been to weddings, I've been to funerals, I've been to parties, birthday parties, and all my friends live all over the UK. It's, I've just been very busy. So uh, yeah, it's a case of uh, being too busy, basically. But hopefully, before the summer leaves us, uh, I'll get to test drive the, the Ford Mustang and the C63 AMG Mercedes. 
So yeah, that's hoping. I know Mercedes can be a bit stingy with test drives, so hopefully we'll get a decent uh, dealer who uh, who's in the mood for a bit of redlining himself. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think, uh, and uh, hopefully we've got some more videos coming up uh, ASAP. Cheers.